you're watching in the evening anyhow. Now yeah. we've got some special guests tonight. We so, do. So everyone knows Dale, and of course people should know Darren, because Darren's been on a few of the shows, because Darren's my sidekick at um, Astle Design. But tonight we're going to do Darren's car, so Blackman's Coupe. Yes. So welcome along, mate. Thanks, mate. Welcome to the to the show. Yes. This will be good, Dale. Something a bit um, bit well, different. Well, another bloody four. Trying to get three people in in one <laughs> background. Yes. But um, set built for two, but we fit it in. Yeah, we fit it in. So let's get straight into it. So Darren had been helping me out for a bit, and he asked me about helping him do his coupe. So he bought um, a complete XB. GT Falcon Hardtop, which everyone calls a coupe, which I get in trouble for all the time. And he pulled it apart at home and he'd been helping me out and said, what are we doing next? Um, I'd like to think about bringing mine over and we'll do that. So tell us a little bit about um, where you found it, mate, and how it all came about. Uh, it was advertised on Facebook, I think it was, and it was up at Penrith. Uh, went and had a look at it. It looked reasonably good, sitting under a carport. Price was right, um, and then he decided not to sell it. And it was, I think, it was six months before I sort of finally managed got to it. convince him. Yes. Price to out of his hand. Yeah. So the photos we're looking at at the moment, obviously, you'd pulled it pretty well down and found, like with most of these cars, it was probably a bit more needed doing than you maybe initially thought. Yes, definitely. <laughs> yeah, and and. You'd found out it had a little bit of history as well. It was a show car or had been to the Summonats as a bit of a show type deal. Yeah, when the guy got it, it was blue and he painted it black, especially for Summonats. And um, it had an early Summonat sticker still on the dash. Oh, okay. So it was Blaze Blue? Yes. Blaze Blue. Um, we'll talk about tags and stuff later. So we obviously took a few more bits and pieces off and, and took it down to um, Steve at, at the Blasters for a Garnet Blast. And we can see now, and, and the look on your face is priceless <laughs> when we went to get it. So we had it on the rotisserie and, and took it down. And you can see that, that first one with the dents on the quarter. And what we discovered is this car had had quite a lot of rust repairs done early in its life. Yeah. And we needed to then go in and, and try and rectify some of that. And I mean, even on those lower quarters, you can see there the, the rust repair had rusted out. Yes. So I don't know whether the guy had a, a boat or whatever, but I mean, the, the back lowers on these tend to rust in here, but it was pretty bad. And it's interesting that photo there, see the little spot just under the light, that's where if they stay too long on iron spot with the sandblasting, that's the actual, how much shoot it, heat, heat it okay. generates. So people, when people talk about blasting, they're, they're the sort of telltales you can see when these things happen. So I'm just gonna buzz through these. There's a nice repair on the, on the door pillar. That looks like my welding, Howard. That was, <laughs> that was, did you do that, though? No, no, I'm, I can't weld. So quite a bit. There's that classic of the the inner guard being repaired, and then it, and then the repair rusted out. Wow. And then a, another typical one, um, the old bronze. Mm, that was nothing, everywhere on the nothing car. like a bit of that's, bronze to do a rust repair. Yep. Mm. And what we had found, and, and you probably didn't see it when you bought it, is that it, it had been beached somewhere as well. So the floor had a fair bit of damage, and you'll see in the photos as we progress where we actually took off a lot of the bracing underneath. And this was prior to a lot of those parts being available, and we, I know you found a, um, a front cut for it. Yes. Um, to get some parts, and that was a picker part. Picker bit, part, it? yeah. Yeah, so remember, yeah, well there you go, we're straight to it. I must be a mind reader. So these parts are now available, but back then, um, I remember you turning up with a trailer with that sort of front cut, and had to clean all those up to get the bits for it. And then on the left-hand side there on the trolley, the, that's one of the main structures from the underside that you normally don't need to take off, but these had a bit of a bow in them, and Darren really wanted to make sure this car was done properly. So um, you can see there the amount of bracing and all that come off it. Um, the front diagonals are off the, for the, the, car, the, hang on, caster bars? Yeah, get it right. Yeah, yes. caster bars. Yeah. And then all the floor bracings um, that run back through the middle. So obviously one set there that we took off, that we drilled the spots out. And the, the process that we worked through here was, Darren basically came over every day and worked on his own car and then paid me to work with him. And that was the next stage to us moving on doing more cars after that. So I guess it's fair to say, Howard, that um, you found a, 
your, your ideas changed a little bit when you found out how much work needed to be done. It wasn't well, I mean, quite as straightforward potentially, or? Well, as soon as you go to the blaster, then you go, oh, mm, shit. Okay. Mm. <laughs> yeah, you, you had a bit of a look at it at home and said it wasn't that good. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> I, I guess the owner always looks at it and goes, oh, it's pretty good. And then you go over with a little sharp screwdriver and go, yep, and, yep. you know, poke a few holes in it. So we knew it had some issues. And I, this is just one good example on the underside of the plenum. And I talk about it all the time is that you get something blasted. If you're genuinely looking to keep these cars for a long period of time, you've got to unpick a lot of other bits and pieces because of the, what's hiding underneath. Mm. So whilst it might look good, once you start yep. unpicking, mm. you've surprised what you find. Um, so benefit of obviously being in a, a rotisserie is you can really get in there and get into it. And I mean, we did sills on this, or you did sills, I think. Yes. We'll find out in a minute. Yes, so I like to try and you know, because we had floor damage, I like to try and get that done before I start unpicking the rest of it. Now, I mean, there was a, a photo come up the other day of, of a, there's a guy in, in um, South Australia that's doing really good coop work that had a coop unpicked that I showed you the other day. I mean, there's mm. nothing left. And I don't have a problem with that because you can then put it all back together nice and straight. But when we were doing this 10 years ago, um, we had it clear in our mind that we'd repair one section and then move on to the next. Mm. So. There was a fair bit to be done, and we worked really well as a team on this one. And we had to do a lot of work on the cross member where the camber bolts went, they were all flogged out. Yes. Um, it had been dragged back a bit, so it needed the diagonals and then the cross member. And then you can see the gold paint there, the weld through primer where they were removed. How come I'm doing all the work? I thought you did all the work. I don't know, I maybe maybe you were the taking the photos. No, I might have been at the back hiding. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you were taking the photos. So that's the, obviously the, the whole plenum out. And sometimes it doesn't need to be removed. This one, we actually replaced the top edge of the, the firewall as well, didn't we? Yes. So into the booth for some epoxy, I would imagine there. So a fair bit of work to be done on upper and lower plenum. Got the tick out. I that would have been nearly a new toy at that stage, I think. We don't need to say you would have just got that in. After yeah. the fit. Yeah. yeah, and I just remember now looking at this. I know that one of the things that you wanted to do here is these are these vent risers are actually normally a, a spot welded on, but you wanted to, to weld them in so that you don't have that overlap for, yes. for long term durability. Yeah. Um, and I mean, a lot of this stuff you forget until you see all the photos and mm. you sort of remember what's going on. So lots of cut and shut, making bits and pieces. There was a lot of rust. There was. And I remember you made the under plates, so where the, um, the wipers bolt on, you made all those bits up. Yeah. And then we get some epoxy. So now we've got a nice shot of the top of the A pillar. And I was talking to a guy on the phone the other day that was looking for A pillars, and I said, mate, you're just going to have to unpick it and make the bits as you go and that's pretty much the scenario. Now what happens here Darren, sometimes we jump all over because I haven't put the photos together real good. Um, but we made a fairly early decision that the roof had to come off because it needed gutters and things. Mm. So there's that construction at the top of that pillar. So I normally pull it down and then start fabbing up the bits and pieces and do the weld and grind to get the top of that A-pillar and then you can see just starting to come around on the top of the firewall. This is where pillarless coops come from with all the work you blokes are doing. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing left. <laughs> you can see a good shot then again of the inside, you know, when you unpick and, and you get to that point, and I don't know how you were feeling at the time, Darren, that you, you know, when do you stop? Hmm. Yes. You know, it's, <laughs> it's just like you go, oh, if that's under there, do I need to keep going? It wasn't much we didn't unpick, um, really. True. And I mean, I mentioned with the Fiat um, in the last episode that my belief is if you can get everything, once you're finished, if you can get everything painted inside and out, what is left trapped, provided that can't get moisture and, and, and air, mm. then you really should have retarded it. You know, it's not really going to go anywhere. So obviously the, the roof's off it now, and then the next stage would have been to get the quarters off. So, that A-pillar's looking a whole lot better now. And 
I recall very clearly that we made the top edge. You and I both made the top edge of that firewall, but I'm sure we'll find that in a minute. So we'll clean the roof up. I don't think the plan was the bottom wasn't that bad on yours, I don't reckon. In one corner, I think it was. Because I've seen them where they're just gone. Mm. You know, there's mm. nothing left. Guy sent me some photos the other day. He was looking for a, a half lower. Yep. And he sent me a photo and it was like, you put your fist through the hole in the plenum. The missing half yeah. lower. Why and, does it leak? And, <laughs> yeah, and a lot of that comes about because that, that small opening's only about this big, gets full of leaves, especially yeah. if they've sat under a tree for a while. And then the leaves hold the moisture and it just sits there. And you know, if it's a reasonably wet environment, um, it just sort of festers away. So the quarter's off, but have a look at the ground. I mean, the rubbish that's come, the sill's still on it, mm. but all of that's obviously come out when the quarters come off, but all of that stuff's been trapped on the inside. Mm. So we've worked through the process, so the sill's off now. So I must admit that I think all the ones we've done, Darren, you've done all the sills. I don't know that I've ever done a set of sills. Oh, no, I, did one, I did one on Cool Mint mm. yeah, before you started helping me, but... Um, you had Darren to help you. To yeah, exactly. Yeah. The yeah. trick is with these though, and, and in doing them, is not to try and take the sill out in one piece. Mm. You want to just mm. quickly go through the what you found the easiest way to get the sill out. Usually, just go alongside the spot welds and um, cut the whole sill off without drilling into the spot welds because you can't get the drill into a lot of spots until the actual sill's removed. Yeah. So. So pretty much cut it into pieces, get it off, yep. and leave the mounting edge all the way around, then yep. go around and drill your spots out. And clean it up, yeah. And clean it up and, and go. And I'd mentioned the other day when I think on call mint that we had to repair the bottom of the A pillar, so I'd removed it. But you can get them out and get the new one back in without removing the bottom of the pillar, as you can see there. Yes. It's a little bit more messing around, but you can do it. So we did a parcel shelf, and back then we did speaker holes, but we bought a sedan shelf and cut that up where now yeah. you can buy that part but mm. we, we were had to, to weld that up and then we noticed there was a few little pinholes around the door locks so um, we cut a few holes in there and look what was hiding made anyway. a few repairs <laughs> and the trick there is obviously to get in and clean it the best you can paint it with you know some sort of paint that's designed to do that we use a lot of POR 15 um, which is a rust preventative chassis style paint that goes in with a brush in it in it i find it very easy there's like kbs there's um por there's a few different brands that all work really well for those areas you can't get to after you've put the whole thing back together so we're missing about now at the back so this is behind the rear um the re on the lower part of the rear quarter And that new shelf and, and riser, so the vertical panel. And then of course the old dreaded taillight panel. So most of those are rusty either along the bottom edge where they meet the beaver. And in most cases, there is one available and I do sell one, but it, a lot of people don't like using it because it's not really that good a reproduction item. Mm -hmm. So I don't know with yours whether we got one of those and cut it up for bits. We did. Yeah, yeah, yeah use, use the bottom bit off the mm -hmm. The, um, the resto one, the, the repo of, one. The shape of the pressings and all that, so the, it just, the, yeah, the louvre look is so They never so quite different. look right no, in no. a lot of areas. Yeah. And I, I was talking to a guy the other day and you know, he bought the repo one and it just, they don't quite have the right shape about them. I mean, you can if you've got nothing, mm. they're really good. Yeah. But if your, original's, if your original's not too bad, then it's probably better to, um, to try and save it with some other parts. So a little bit of rust up under the the, um, the drip gutter here, secondary piece. Outer edge on the wheel arch. So we normally just bend up a bit of angle and then shrink or stretch it in both directions and work our way around a piece at a time. Oh, look at that, there's a happy chappy. <laughs> Might have lost a few kegs since then, Dale. Yes, you, you're uh, a lot lighter now. A couple of repairs, wheel arches, lower quarters, You've and then everything left on there. Everything sealed up. Well, that's quite together compared to the well, I haven't shown yeah. you, but you ought to mm -hmm. see this one that was on the on um, Facebook the other day. 
So I like to try and do, you know, where we've been welding and doing things, do the repairs and get it all painted before we put the quarters on, because it's just a whole lot easier to do it before than it is to do it later. Um, and then once these quarters are off, they normally have that stone guardy bitumen base type stuff. And what do we ended up with now? Pretty much um, heat and a scraper. Yes, heat gun and scraper. Heat gun and scraper. Yeah. Cleans all that out. Um, nowadays, with a lot of that stuff that we do, Darren's my man. He rips those off and cleans them up, and we've got like a pretty good system. And then we send the shell out to be like on a door, for instance, or a bonnet. We get the shells blasted, and then we paint strip and and clean the others ourselves. Minimise the damage. You've done a few to work out how to do it properly. We have. We yeah. have got a bit of a system. <laughs> yeah. So that's that lower quarter, and, and there's pretty much two options now. You can do what I've done there and, and maintain the back edge, and then go through, and you can now buy a complete one that replaces the whole lot. This is the more cost-effective one. And then every coupe known to man. <laughs> it's backed into a gar, a fence or something because yep, yep. you, when you drive these things you can't see out of them can you? You've had a few. Yeah, a few coops. just before I sold me unrestored one I was coming out of the shed and it just touched the side stri uh, the side mould and you know I was pretty careful but it didn't have a left hand mirror so and, I was and guessing. you physically cannot mm. see out of it. No. So I've found that nearly everyone we've had to work on there's not a, some sort of damage on that, that strip. Mm. And this car was a protection pack car. Yes. And the little heat spots there is probably where the, the buttons got ground off by the previous people. They ground a bit far by memory and we ended up going along and putting a bit of metal back in there. All these old girls have big hips, don't they? They do. <laughs> They're pretty, pretty broad. And I mean, I think we all forget that it wasn't that long ago they weren't worth anything. No, that's right. That's correct. That's right. You know, like these cars, well, say 20 years ago, were under a tree somewhere yeah. and they were two grand. Yeah. You know, they just that they, they, they weren't didn't have any value. All of a sudden now, there's less and less of them, and everybody wants one, so the, the price just keeps going yeah. up. So that's out of sequence because the last one showed them all well up. But yeah. that's life. We'll move on. Um, so. The welding's done now, and I'm just starting to get some shape into that. So the process there, for me at least, is to get my lines, you know, I use that bit of Tassie oak that you've seen me use, yep. just to lay on there and, and get everything to line up and, and be happy in my mind's eye that I'm getting that true coupe shape. And having the guard off gives me the ability to do that. And you can see along that body line now just how rough the body line is. and what we do now is have a heavy table that we put the the leather shop bag on yep. and then run a drift along there and put the line back in it so that you've got some metal to work with because off the car you need some sort of stability but at the same token you need to work that metal back out where it had been run along a gate or whatever the, to do the damage. So what's the story with XB? Now for those that don't know Darren's the a GT clubby, so as I call it, so he, he knows a lot more about these cars than I do. The side scoops, did all XBs have them? All GTs? All coupes, yes. All GT coupes? Yeah. So, so it's always that debate. Some did and some didn't have scoops. Was it all, just all the GTs had them? All the GTs, yeah. The so AMB? No, A's didn't. A's didn't, that's no. what I mean. And mm, there's this mm. whole debate about, oh yeah, they had them, but I remember when I worked in spares, we used to sell a lot of them because everyone wanted them, you know, yeah, like... They look cool. Even for their Monaros, mate. <laughs> and the fuel caps. Yeah. And a nine-inch. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. I had a nine-inch in my Monaro, anyway. But the reason that photo's there and when we're sitting on it is I'm a, a real stickler and believer in trial fitting. So the idea there is, is that because they've been damaged and I've now welded in rust repairs, I want to fit that... Mm at this stage in steel to make sure the body's matching up to that aluminium because mm. I can't change the shape of the aluminium real easy. No, be nothing worse than having it painted and then find it doesn't you fit. You go to bolt that on yeah. and there's a, there's there's a, a two big, or three mil gap somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> so the process in, in that 
before the, the quarter even goes back on, is to make sure we've got the right shape of the quarter for that to go on. So you can see it there fitted up. Same with the ring. Um, and I had that experience today where I put the, I'm about to paint the ring off the Boss XC. Yep. And I, it was all paint stripped and cleaned up and I filed the holes out of the new paint job and sat it on there to make sure that it sat like it did when I trial fitted it. Yes. You know, 12 months ago mm -hmm. before I paint the ring because if I needed to tweak it a little bit, now's the time, not after I paint it black. A bit like yeah. then, yes. So that's why the ring's on there. That's why the light's in it. So it's all about all that trial fitting to make sure it's going to work. And there's the there's, Tassie Oak. There's your little piece of timber. Now, I think looking in the middle there I've also we've made up a little ring I don't know which one of you two made that I know one of you because they were no, you the might have started working with us yet then no I hadn't quite started I did the um, indicator the press for the indicator the press for the indicator yeah. so what I made is is what I find is with the fuel cap with the push button the fact that everyone pushes too hard on them and when they stop working they push even harder that the quarter tends to have a little flat spot through the mm. fuel filler mm. So I made up a ring that fits on the inside with a bolt that goes onto my slide hammer and I bolt that in solid and then I pull the quarter up yep. to come up to my Tassie Oak and I reckon that's what I'm doing there as part of that trial fit and to make sure everything's going to work. Ah, specialty piece? Specialty piece. Now, exactly right. Darren's made a lot of these. <laughs> yes. You do this blindfolded, Darren. Several hundred, I think. <laughs> so this was the first one that we actually got out of a car in one piece. Yes. And we are able to, to make a template of that, and we've obviously got a laser cut in there, and Darren welds them up and, and makes them. So that's the little bit at the back of the quarter, and just in around from the tail light. Ford ended up with their pressings, a gap of about 15 mil, and that was the solution. So that's got a little curve in it, like that, yep. and, it, and they just stuck that in a couple of spot welds, and that filled the hole up. So if you're doing a concourse, you really need that little bit to make sure that when you look inside, it looks original. Mm. Now, I think you sourced this boot lid, didn't you? Yes, the other one had a few holes in it. <laughs> had, more holes, <laughs> had more holes than this one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and this one had a few. Um, so I think the photos here show that we stripped this, but only up until recently, you couldn't get a skin. And I'm trying to think of the guy in, that his name in, in Adelaide, but there's, there is a guy now making skins for these. Um, and I should know that, but I don't, because I never remember anyone's names. Um, so we stripped it off. There's the scraper. That'll go out to the blasters. The shell will go off to the blasters. And then a process, and I've found a few more products now that are a bit better, but back then we were using all sorts of acids and, and the oxidine and whatever to get the rust out of it. And I think it'll probably turn up in there, but I, we welded up with the TIG quite a lot of holes in that skin, by memory. Yes. And had to do a couple of rust repairs as well. And there's one of them happening right now. So that's been off the blasters and now some of those spots, so they tend to rust where the sealer is and it's eaten the edge away. Yeah. So we've put in pieces in there now so that those edges all look nice and straight when it's finished. For a simple panel, there was a hell of a lot of work when you do a boot lid. A lot. Wasn't there? Yes. Ridiculous amount. Like yeah. you look at it, it just looks like a big flat panel. Mm -hmm. Yep. But yeah, so much going on underneath that you can't see that required fixing. So this is the edge of the quarter in the boot. So, you know, with the boot rubber channels and they were made as an overlap piece from the factory. So once again, they're a rust trap and that's a good photo there of the whole thing. So. Pretty much all of that's available now, but back then we had to fab quite a lot of it. And you can see the Clecos there now holding everything on, trying to get our gaps right. So I always say to people, the opportunity to actually have everything off means that you can put it all back together mm. and try and get the gaps as close as possible. And I know at that stage, um, when Darren was working with me, he hadn't seen that done before. Yeah, And it's quite, um, eye-opening how much you can move stuff around from the original spot worlds to actually straighten the car up. Especially when you got, you know, you had a different boot lid from another car and you might yeah. have different doors. And yeah, and a bit of repo here yeah. and, you know, all that sort of stuff. So that's like a, a, a repo corner that we've got happening there. 
And in a lot of cases, you've got to make little bits and pieces. And, and this particular car, just describe in your own words, Darren, what you were looking for from a body point of view with the car. It wasn't something that looked stock standard if the car went back to original. So if somebody wanted to restore it back to original, take all the modified stuff off, the body really didn't have to be touched. And that was sort of, I wanted the spot welds, yes. overlaps, stuff like that. And that's the sort of thing I'm looking at here because I look at that and think, you know, show car you welded up and bog it up. Yeah. But to get the result we were looking for with this car, you've got to weld up, when you drill out the spots, you've got to weld those back up. So when you put it back in, we can put the spots in. Yeah. And one of the things that I see and I'm sure you see when you look at the concourse judging is that you don't want all the spots to be even. Yes. Because Ford's never right. made them even. Mm, yeah. If you go along and put them in at every 25 mil dead center, mm. you look at it and go, nah. It's not, something not quite right. It's not quite right, it's mm. too good because they were never that good. Now, that little spot I always find in behind the hinge is a bit tricky to get it to look right. And I think we did yours, Darren, the, the, the line between the quarter and that back window panel is we fully weld that and then run the blade back through like a one mil blade and then put a 40 grit sanding and, and put that radius back in because it's just got a bad habit of not looking right. And a bit of a rust trap if the sealer dries up or something like that, cracks. Yeah. Yeah. And we know that back window area is you know one of the worst places so mm. it's something we learned I think on Cool Mint and then we've continued to do all the way through so it looks factory. Yep. but it's actually you know a lot more solid and sealed and you can get your levels a lot nicer because they're not real flash in around there not sure why that one's in it looks like the last one except the boot rubbers in now now talking about boot rubbers and i think you might have woke me up to this darren we were having trouble with the boots and then you said to me one day that that original coupe you had there was something different about the boot rubber you remember what it was? Other than being flatter, maybe some holes in it. Or something. The holes in it. Yeah. And what happens is you get the whole a new rubber, and then you do a really neat job of joining it together with the old super glue. Is you actually create a pillow. Mm, yeah. And when you go to shut the boot, it's got to actually compress the air. Yep. And when we we're looking at the original car, it had a hole. I reckon about every 18 inches and had a little mm -hmm. hole that was about two or three mil. Yep. Yep. And I can't think which car, whether it was your car, this one or another one, that we actually went around with a little um, punch and just by hand put those holes mm. in and all of a sudden the boot closed better yep. and sat down better because it wasn't sitting on that pillow mm. there. So if you're having trouble, it's not the rubber, it's the fact no. that it can't breathe. So once again, when we're doing all this work, we trial fit the rubber. Mm. We try to fit the hinges, we try to fit the locks. Everything's got to go in and be fitted up before we get anywhere near thinking about sealing it up and putting some filler in it. And that includes the back window, which I'm sure we'll see shortly. The bonnet. It's in the booth, it looks like together. Did we strip your bonnet? Because this is a long yes, time ago. we did. So the classic lots of parts photo. Mm. Well, you've got a booth this time. That have. I've got a booth. Um, it's just a never ending run of, of things to do and parts to clean. And there's the boot lid back. So I remember this being quite lengthy in the process. That shows how many holes were in There you go. So that's <laughs> how many. And you and I developed a system with that. So I was on the TIG and you was on the air hose and the rag, I think, weren't you? No, I think it was just air. Just, just air? Yeah, just fill the so little So basically go zip with a little dob and then cool it as quick as you can and move it and you could see it rise and then the air would cool it and yeah. we got away with a lot of a lot of spots. Mm. Um, Without no hammering at all. Yeah, it, it, it worked out really good. And then the quarter there, you can see I've got the oxy going there doing a few heat shrinks. And I mean, it, they really are a very big panel and it's very mm. rare you get one that doesn't need some work. Well, I don't know what that is. Back window trim. It looks like it. Mm. You'd know because you know we have to repair them. Yeah, I think that one was pretty bent up. So while we're on that, I mean, 
you did quite a lot of years polishing. Yes. For a long time before you came here. Yes. And what a lot of people don't realise is that just polishing the trim can change the shape. You yeah. want to just uh, tell us a bit about that? Well, if your hands are too far apart, you end up creating a big bow in it. Um, so is that from yeah. the pressure or from the heat? Both. Both. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously, when you're working that, you've, mm. you've got a fair bit of pressure on it. Yeah. So just simply by being too far apart. Too far apart. Yeah. So yeah. either close your hands up or sit a bit of timber under it so it's supported, supported while, you, while you're actually polishing it. Yeah. And then I know that I've seen you do it, whereby those those moulds have got like a, a straight edge and then a turn lip on it. Yeah where you've actually straightened it up, straightened sure. the lip up, mm. then we put it in a shrinker stretcher to reshape the mould, yes. and then have to put the lip back on it. Mm. And yeah. so, I mean, people say, and I hear it all the time, there's some specialists that do this stuff, but I mean, if you're doing a car at home, if you think about the practicality of what you're trying to achieve, you've got to look at what heat does and pressure mm. does and the use of like shrinker yep. stretches and things to be able to actually do that, even though it's a stainless mold, because the area we're working on is not the outer surface, but it can affect the shape of it. Yes. And it's surprising what you can get done. Right, eh? so we're now looking at the underside and we've obviously sealed put all, all those bits back on again. It's healthier than we last saw it. Sealed all the gaps. Yep, so the old sicker. So I use a, um, we've been using the Sika um, automotive sealant, is yes. the word, 227 I think the number is. And you found that um, one colour is better than the other, haven't you? Yes, the black's very messy and doesn't clean up as nice and the white, a uh, bit of prep sole and it sort of wipes off straight away. The only downside is, is if you move something later and it's all black, the white might be visible, yeah. the black won't. So it's a bit of a, a, an up and down because we normally go stone guard or a raptor or a, a bully coating and then we go to paint we've always used the white because it's it's quicker it's cleaner it's a nicer finish um, quarters so that's obviously in steel um, or it might have a bit of filler it looks pretty good on the inside there mm. so I like I like to fill the insides so that when you look in the boot of a restored car like yours was that doesn't look good on the outside, but there's still a few little waves and thing on the inside. And I'm not talking a lot of filler. There's the bonnet apart. There's the bonnet. So obviously this was a donor as well because um, it's the wrong colour. Did you have to, or they, someone else put that on there? Because that's a white bonnet, obviously. I've got no idea. Can't remember. No. <laughs> so it looks like we had it blasted all in one and then found some damage yeah. that, and then decided we'd better pull them apart. So now we've jumped, the boot's going together. And there's that repair on that bottom edge of the, the tail light panel. So people may not have seen this filler before. We, we were using a, a fine filler that PPG had that I don't, I think it was called Galvaplast, which I don't think they do anymore. And we just found that good for those light repairs where you, you're not sort of loading the car up. Um, so the boots was just together, now it's apart. This is magical, though, <laughs> isn't it? It's like time travel, now. <laughs> so I always like to get them on the right colour on the insides. And depending on how much time you go to, we, we've sort of learnt that once you get it together, if you back mask that skin when you're doing all the primers and all on the outside, when you look down through the holes, it's still the right colour blue. Mm. And it's just a bit of a magical trick if you've got the time to do it. We did it on 400, didn't we? Yes. That looked, there's a lot of masking, but it looked really cool. So there's that bit of bog on the inside. And I mean, I know you rub, well, you probably rub this one, but we normally just do that with a soft block. We're not trying to make it mm. like the outside of a yeah. panel. It's more about making it, um, when you stick your head inside the, the wheel art so that it looks tidy and not full of dents. It's a bit of primer and trace, rub it out and then Put the blue on, so blaze blue, isn't it? This yes, one? blaze blue. Blaze blue. You like your blues, don't you? I do. How many blue cars you reckon you own? 20? Uh, there's a few. <laughs> <laughs> I can think of about six or seven. There's one outside that's still bloody blue. I think, yeah. I think I sold four just to do this coupe. 
So. Well, that's true. So you had a, a U. Had a true blue U. True blue U. True XY. blue wagon. And that was what yeah. X Y. Yeah. Yeah. B F. Was it B F? Oh yes. Sedan. The B F G T. Yeah. Uh, the, other, many cars. the other, the other, the other blaze blue. <laughs> In um, all this time, I think I've owned one car. And you don't. Yeah. <laughs> Darren likes his blue Fords. Yeah, something to do with an oval, you know? blue oval. Yeah. <laughs> so this is me being clever. So I've I've marked the the um, the skin up with a bit of whiteboard marker, mm -hmm. so that I can work out where my sealer's got to go. So where okay. it's going to go, I would imagine. Or I've polished that bit. I've probably sanded it so I don't have to sand it later. That's what I would have done. So I've set it's map. There you go. Yes. So I've worked out where it goes, and then I've rubbed it all down so I don't have to rub it later. Ready to do that. And the so you don't have to rub too much. Yeah. So I'd mask. Mm. Then I'd back yeah. mask that, prime and, and get it all ready, and then pull the mask off, and then that blue is already ready to take the, the final coat. Mm. No Just, doubt about it. You're a thinker, Howard. I'll try, mate. I'll try. <laughs> Trying to save my hands and, and some yeah. time normally, because people say, oh, it's a lot of messing around masking, but the time to, when that overlap in the boot and you look back in, it just gets that dry spray and, yeah. and you never seem to get it out. Yeah. And if it's done nice, when you look in there, it's really nice. And that's a good example there why I'd, I would imagine that's had to come off one more time because I'm sure we painted the tubs as we well. We did, yes. So the sills are getting ready, so that would have been primer and 2K. Now I think we tried something trendy, didn't we do little dots or something on there? We did. We um, Everywhere was going to be spot welded. We sort of hit it with a wire, little round wire brush. Was it that one or is that the one I bought the little dots? Remember the, the stick on dots? I'm not sure everywhere there was, was a spot weld, yeah. I put a stick on dot, painted it and pulled the dots off. So the, the, that end what up, are you laughing at, Dave? Oh, right? it's just, you know, you learn. Just you? trying all the time yeah, yeah. to find a solution to, to get it all sealed up. But Because uh, if you don't do that, you've got to go around with a little wire brush and you've got to clean it up to Afterwards, it, to, be to, 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 to be able to spot so weld it. Yeah. It makes sense to do it. It sounds funny at the time, but... Yeah, I, I can't remember. We don't do it now. It must have, must have been a bit of a pain. I think trying to get the dots back, back off. off. Yeah. So the seal set up. And we're plug welding, and then there's some grinding going on. Now, mm, now sunroof, sunroof. <laughs> Can I slap him? No. <laughs> Darren's Please. also a bit of a sunroof man. <laughs> so I, I, you put one in the wagon, didn't you? Yes. Put a roll back in the wagon, and that was like the experiment for this one almost. Yes, I made up my own jigs to fold the roof lip and everything. So. Now, if I remember correctly, you put a BMW Goldie in that, didn't you? Yes. So tell us it the was story. I, what, what, what was the go there? I know you can now buy the whole thing, but when you couldn't get them, there was a particular BM or something you get the Mercedes, Goldie Mercedes, I think it was. Was that? About a, around but 80 to 85 model Mercedes was exactly the same size. So when you look from the outside, it just looked like a normal windback roof. Yep. But um, it was an actually electric roof. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, so it didn't have the handle. It was a, a different, mm. but it looked the same shape yes. and the same size. Yeah. So, because I remember it looked good, and I just mm. thought, um, and I remember you telling me it was out of a BM. Um, so that particular one you had was a genuine one, but it needed a bit of work. Yes. And once again, back then you couldn't buy the bits Anything like you can now, yeah. and you can buy pretty much everything. So. We're in the booth with the gun out, so we're getting a bit of blue on. And once again, this is solely about getting it painted before the quarters go on, because it's impossible to get a spray gun in there. To do mm. that outer lip, and the fact that it's welded, you know, across the bottom edge, it means all that's sealed up. You're going to get a little bit of damage when you when you weld it. But I like to think that I'm actually protecting it all yes. before we get the quarter on. There you go, you got all your crosses there, mate. Ready to go yeah, with the wire wheel. Them all out. Yeah. And then when we put these plenums on, I normally come back in just on that rolled edge to run the sicker adhesive all the way around there to act as a sealant mm -hmm. and an adhesive. So we're going to plug weld it. 
No, you're, we spotted yours. Spotted, yes. Because you welded all the holes up, didn't you? Yep. So the idea was to have it look original, but the problem is, is where that top meets the bottom, if you just go along and plug it, you really, it's all open. And from the factory, they had a sealer in them. I don't know what it was, but it was definitely a rust trap. So we've sealed it up with a urethane, pulled it down, and then it's a good, good opportunity to see how that was done. And then they were all lined up. Now, I would be sure in my mind that we would have put weld through on that then before they were spotted. Not sure, not 100% sure yeah, about Yeah, I reckon we would have, like that, um, the copper base one. Mm. And then all of these parts obviously all get plug welded back on. And with that process, it's really about when you drill them out and when you cut the welds, is leaving enough little telltales to be able to put it back, eh? Yes, definitely. So I remember someone, I think it might have even been with, with Boss XC, someone put on there, why would you put that back on crooked? And it's probably just us from habit because when we pull things apart, you can normally clean it up and put it back on, line the spot welds up and yep. plug it. Mm. So, it, you know, it's it's just a thing you do. But they're pretty rare that they're ever straight. I'm having a good laugh there. There must have been a bit of pain on that door. <laughs> There's a few layers. Yeah, these photos I did for a slideshow for, for Motorex many, many, many years ago. And um, obviously they jump around a bit compared to what I do now, Dale. Yes, yeah, you're a bit more organised <laughs> these days. So that quarter now is getting the same treatment as the plenum, so getting ready for some spots and the same across the back. And we've been, managed to, to make enough of these copper dollies and things to be able to get the spot welder to fit because a couple of the classics is along the drip gutters, when the roof goes back on, you need to grind mm. one down and get the mm. right shape. Across here, uh, I can't think what the terminology was, the ones I bought, but we've still had to bend the arms and all to, to get them to fit. So it's not like I'll buy a spot welder and that'll work. Mm. There's actually we'll work a going fair on bit of messing yeah. around to make all the bits and pieces up and not be fighting to grind up what they supply to be able to get them in to be able to get the heat. And I mean, it's not a bad size, but I mean, on a panel like that, memory it's like two or three good full goes to get it hot enough hot enough yeah, to really make sure yeah. it's getting through yeah. um, and I know like across the bottom of that panel that tips pretty much red hot isn't it yes yeah and yeah you can see I'm asking him because he normally does it so here's his sunroof now I can't remember his, I think we got some bits folded up and all for that we're not on it very long because we've now moved over something else so, what are we up to here, Darren? Trial fitting the repo chrome around the wheel arches. I think we had to shrink or stretch them just to make sure that they fitted properly. Yep, that same old scenario. So we welded all the holes up from the factory and these come with the holes in them. Yep. But what we found is they really didn't, weren't 100% to the shape of the, the guard. Yep. And I mean, that could be simply the fact that this, the quarter panel is not the same as the original or the repo mould is not the same, but all I know is we've got to make them match. Because yes. we're going to put them on afterwards and I don't want it the same deal. I don't want to be trying to put it on later and don't fit. Right, eh? So I've managed to paint all that roof structure as well by a lot of it. And we need to do some gutters. So now I think this was the first car we put a set of um, new gutters on. So we, we borrowed a set off a wagon for Cool Mint. Yes. Dale and I did, you weren't around then, pick Darren, apart, no. yeah, from Pick Apart. And then this one now is one of the ones we sell from Jamie from Custom Garage. And I know, with, so this is as per OEM, so as per original. And originally they were spot welded on. And I know in this case was part of your philosophy, I guess, is that we pop riveted these on because we were trying to reduce that chance of the rust scenario coming back. Yeah. So they were sealed with the urethane and then so glued urethane adhesive and then riveted to go because the roof comes down and covers all of that. But once again, it was to try and minimize that rust. I don't think I've done another one the same. I normally weld them on, but it's always that preference. 
So there's that nice Look roof. Look at that beautiful roof here. Yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? Straight, you wouldn't want, straight you as a wouldn't, dollar. wouldn't want to spoil that, would you? <laughs> so the philosophy here was, is that we knew that Darren wanted to put a sunroof in it. So my thinking was, I'm going to make the roof really nice. Yeah. So that when it goes on, when we go to put the hole in it, we, we know that when we started it was good, so we should be able to get it back to good. Because if it's already dented and you cut it, then you got an issue. You were secretly hoping he wouldn't put the sunroof in. Well, I, yeah. I, I mean, it's one of those <laughs> things, isn't it? I'm not a sunroof person, yeah. but Darren clearly is, and he's mm. had plenty of them. So it's like a, it's a personal choice thing, but I just think it's yeah. a waste of a good roof. But, you know, everyone on their own. Each to their own. So, same deal. Clean up for spot well. Make sure you're going to get good contact. Um, I reckon we probably measured them out because that's what we're like. I did. Yeah, they would have been all measured and all the little crosses and then all wire wheeled and all in place and then a lot of clamps to I, clamp it all down. I like that previous photo, How would you see how wide the, the quarters are on the car. When you look down on the roof and you look how much quarter... How much hang, is hanging out past the roof line. Out. No wonder they get bumped into. That's true. <laughs> They're a good, good pick up, no? They're, um, yeah, big girls. So you can see there we're, we're, we're plugging now and of course we've got a bit of paint down so on the other area. So that's a leather blanket and there we've got a few of those now and it's a, um, a really good move. Actually, I don't know if it is leather, but we use a leather blanket a lot. Um, yeah, because in the window opening they're plug welded and then up over the, the rails um, they're spotted. I mean you could spot all the way around the back but that means you've got to weld up all the holes mm. and it's not going to be seen so mm. it's, it's one of it's just quicker and easier to, to do it and probably more solid. So what's going on here? I forgot I even done all that. <laughs> <laughs> Tried to blank it out of his memory. Yeah, the old rough cast looked a bit ugly, so out come the grinder and did a die grinder and smoothed them all up. So I think my memory, you popped them out to replace them and then it was like, oh, I can clean these. Being a polisher, nice. I could give these a bit of a lick, clean them up a bit. So it goes away a little bit from the idea of being fully restored, but it was a, a nice, clean restoration. And but they would have had your bushings and all that sort of yes. stuff put in them as well. And, yeah, know. so you can get, um, we've used the brass and we've used the, the, the plastic. I think the brass are good, but you've normally got to ream them out to get them to work. They're yep. normally a bit tight. Yes. And the little pin at the top there with the roller on it. It's surprising how often people will, will do the hinge one but not do the roller and it's the biggest bugbear with all Falcons mm -hmm. is that roller seizes up and that's what wears out your, your check mechanism. So that one there is a real piece of work to get out. So normally a fair bit of heat on the cast part of it and then hold the, the pin in the vise and then belt the living hell out of it. <laughs> By memory, what, 15, 20 mil long, the spline that goes in there? So it's a fine yes. spline that's driven in yep. with the, the little wheel on it. And if the wheel's got the side worn out of it, you've got to change it. You've got to get mm. that pin out. And I found that heat's the best thing for that. So if you can get that cast fairly warm and then the old persuader, Drive it out. clean it all up. Mm. And you can buy repo. There's all different people. and Some are better than others to buy the roller and the replacement pins, but I think we've always used the originals where we can, and I think we've probably salvaged some out of other hinges mm. to use, because the, the repo ones just don't seem to hold as nice. Well, there's a good shot of that difference. Before yes. the Blackman treatment and yeah. after the Blackman treatment. So there might have been a little bit of my involvement there, because <laughs> we did all of that on, on the Pioneer Coop, I know that, that was all ground up. So now, door fitment. Big lump of tape on there, and I've got my timber on the ground and flippers and hammers and stuff. So oh, I guess there's a bit of shaping going on there. Special appearance in the background, Howard. Look at the Bambino. <laughs> so it hasn't, hasn't left yet. There we go. A bit of tape down the side, chasing that line. That lovely coop line. So that one there's come out pretty good. So that's obviously had a really nice coat of deoxidine. That, that I've run full length and that just helps visually as well to get, you know, whether you've got the feeling going right. Because I find if it's if it's all done in, you know, you sand it all up, yep. 
it gets a bit shiny where you hit it with a deoxidane it sort of mats it off and leaves that gold tinge on it you can actually get a feel in steel visually um, and what it's going to look like the doors looking a bit second in though yes ah, the sunroof backs made a return so I'm i think to... we had bent some pieces up and i had to use a hammer and chisel to shape i think you're right about that I think some there's the a, channel, isn't there yeah. a bit of steel out there with some brackets and stuff on it that mm. we made like a bit of a press thing. God, they're all over the joint. So we progressed that and fixed the rust on the original that. guard. Look at that. Look still at got that. blue. Still got the blue and the black. It's got a bit <laughs> of everything on it. So the guards haven't had anything done to them there by the look of it. So they've now gone on. We're working our way forward. And we had a bit of trouble with this car getting everything to line up in the sense of we wanted door gaps, but we didn't want to be adding too much here and there, but mm. we, we ended up chasing, you know, as much as five mil to get it to be square down the line, but also the gaps right. And we had to trim a few things to get it to come together. And a lot of people don't realize, and we've done it a few times now, is that panel where the wipers go is actually not the same width as the bonnet. Okay. So if you stand at the front of a standard Falcon, mm. every one of them, the bonnet's going to go along. And then yep. when, so the guard goes all the way, yep. the bonnet gets to, to that panel and that yep. panel's wider <laughs> than the bonnet. So the gap can't be the same. No. So you, you might add three, same, mil, three yeah. mil to that cow panel, yep. but five or six mil on the bonnet because they're different sizes. Mm. So we've cut Doesn't matter what up. you do, you're not going to get around it's that. It's never going to work. So mm. we've, we've always, cut that panel and taken out whatever it is. Mm. So whatever bonnet we've got, we get that panel and we cut it to and match. narrow it up to yeah. match the bonnet to get the gaps right. And it still looks factory, but... It does, <laughs> it, yeah, you can't, you, you look at it and go, this looks really good, why yeah. are the gaps so why good? Why does it look mm. good? And that's why. And it, you know, mm. it's a lot easier to cut that one than it is to weld all the way down the bonnet and wreck the bonnet while you're yep. welding it. Mm. Oh, oh, hey, Dale. Oh, this is where I slap him. Oh, looking at that nice roof. Oh. So, try and explain to us how um, you managed to do that. And you got 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've seen some pictures of sunroofs getting done in the past. Uh, one of the guys out of the club used to fit them at one stage and sort of learn how to cut the corners so when it folds over, it stretches the skin without buckling the edge. Yep. Um, and they're, it's usually a steel frame that they put in there. I made all wooden jigs and clamped and uh, you take it slow and you get yeah, the same so effect. Yeah, so you effectively, I think if the photos are in here, you would effectively made the, the jig to hold the roof in the shape of the original yes. roof. Yeah. And then gone along with a piece of timber very slowly and, and knocked that edge down. Yeah. And part of that issue is to get in the little corners and all to look original. Mm. Yeah. And that's just knowledge. And that's all painted on the inside already as well. And look at that, here's a video. And it works. Must have done something right, Dave. Right. Look how well, young he is there, mate. Yeah, eh? He's very young. <laughs> little chubber. Not as many grey hairs. I think this car gave me a lot of grey hairs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the... But I mean, that was a, a pivotal moment. The fact that we'd gone through that process well, yeah. You'd gone through the majority of it, and I. Yeah, you were just watching I'd, him do that. Yeah, That's and I'd good. flipped it a bit here and there and, and helped <laughs> yeah. out, but I mean, the, yep. you know, you were ninety nine percent the process, um, and the satisfaction on that day to actually have it in there. And I don't it, think you wanted anything to do with it. Not really. <laughs> you know, didn't quite get it, but yeah. this life. So, good result um, yeah. out of all of that, and I mean, nowadays you can buy the whole thing, which is cool, but the satisfaction of repairing and then Getting cutting it in and doing the whole thing was really cool. Yeah. So there's that bonnet, and this is just one of those examples where we've cleaned it all up, put a coat of epoxy on it, and I've just blocked the epoxy out to find out what I'm up with, and then that enables me to knock it out. Nowadays I would go over the whole thing with um, deoxidine, that mats it off, and then the file shows shiny yeah. and I can do it without I mean, that was part of that learning process as we were going. Um, what's happening with the bonnet pins there? Is we just pulled them all apart or something? That looks... I think we took the cup off. 
off the back. It just looks a bit yeah. odd there. I don't know whether there's still black paint in the hole or something. It just looks a bit odd. No, we did take the cup off for it, isn't it? Yeah. And obviously cleaned up inside and out. And then the same with the door skins. I mean, this is just tedious work that's got to be done. Yeah, it looks like we blasted those. They must have really had a lot of mm -hmm. crap on and it. Unless, yeah, it may have been just the outs. I don't know. No, it's it like looks it's all like been it. Done. There was an earlier photo yeah. of you doing paint stripping on the on a couple of doors, and I think that's when you found that there was too much, way too much paint mm -hmm. on. So there's all those. So those shelves definitely be fully blasted, and then we bring them straight back. And when you pick stuff up from the blasters, we always wear gloves mm. because whatever's in your hands. Um, whether or it's oils, oils moisture or yeah. whatever's yeah. straight on it. So Steve normally does them for me, rings me up and says they're done, I'll go and get them, bring them back and put them straight in the booth and get the epoxy on them. And doing it that way, I blow them off with plenty of high pressure air, compressed air, and then epoxy straight over. And that way the epoxy's going straight into those pits that is created with the garnet. If you sand, I find that if you sand it, and I've spoken to other people in the game, if you sand that um, surface, you then got to get all of that debris out of the pits. Mm. But if you've got them straight out of the blast to clean them and they're painted within hours, mm. then you're, you're pretty right to go with your epoxy straight up and then go about doing the repairs. If I've got something really bad, I might take the option to actually, if I've had it blasted, to do the repairs but then I've got to sand it all and clean it mm. and the extra time to get it all ready. Wow, a bit of bling. A bit of bling, a bit we of polish. Be, we must be getting closer to the end. Yeah. So Darren's um, would have done those and he's and he just he's about to do the XC ones because they've all been straightened, you've straightened them all up yeah. probably 18 months ago. Mm. And they're now sitting there waiting in um, basically in Scotch Bright by memory to be polished. But it's just one of those labours of love you've got to do. And then more rust. The guards, I think they weren't too bad, a set of guards by memory. Now, Trial fit. Darren's the dreaded, favourite, the favourite dreaded thing. back window. <laughs> the dreaded back window. Yes. They really are a bugbear for a coupe. And we've had no end of, of difficulties, even with original rubbers and all, but it's really about getting that moulding into the rubber correctly. Mm -hmm. And before you even try and fit it, measure that point to point on the bottom edge to make sure that sitting in the rubber, it's the right width before you try and put it in. Because we've seen so many of them over the years that are hanging out. Yeah. Because and when they've put them in, mm. the mouldings aren't mm. in the rubber correctly. I think we put a little bit of urethane here and there to hold the stainless in. So when we Did pop we tack it in... one together? The bottom mould? I'm not sure. I have a no. bit of a vague... I know that this yeah. trial fit worked yes. because I helped Darren put the thing in when we got to assembly. Yes. yes. First go. Wasn't First it done? Go. Popped and, straight and, in. And, and Howard wasn't there Couple that of pros. day. And Couple I don't of think pros. Howard believed us yeah. that we got it in the first go. <laughs> you did what? <laughs> Not possible. So there's that sunroof yep. and a door. God, we're jumping all over the place. And then door locks, we know they crack. Around crack. The walls. And some of that useless information is the XC's came out with a panel in the back as a mm. reinforcement. And I've got a guy that makes those now that we sell because it doesn't affect your lock in any way and it stops long term having that same problem. So they were fitted from the factory, so we know they work. So if you've got an A or a B, you can actually buy those and, and they were spot welded in, but I would imagine even if they were urethaned in, it would would help to strengthen mm. that area because it's a bit of a soft spot. And then more repairs. So leading edge of the bonnet. I think you just made those up here, Darren, by memory. Whoa. That's a few Got a parts. Full. <laughs> <laughs> Always say loads of black. So moving forward with the bonnet, so all the insides are done. Sunroof painted blue. Once again, sicker automotive sealant, not adhesive. The adhesive tends to pull. And now we're getting close to it. I know for sure that we started this process on Bathurst weekend. Mm. So early October, we started the process with your brother-in-law to actually 
get the paintwork done. And I remember it vividly because you didn't show up the day after Bathurst. I was a bit inebriated. <laughs> <laughs> Still. Yeah. <laughs> so there's one of those edges. I think we had to give a bit of a trim mm. to get things to fit. Nice shot of the sunroof, bonnets on. So I remember we tweaked that a little bit just to get, you know. The corners sitting everything. up. Yeah, we just had a few little issues trying to get mm. to look like it didn't have one in it. So I always felt that I wanted to stand back from an angle and, and not know there's a sunroof until you get to it. So it looks it looks right there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The previous photo you could see it wasn't quite right. Yeah, now, so we spent a little bit of time sorted, messing yeah. about with that. And obviously some heat shrinks in the guard to get that badge area. That's always a bit of a, a bugbear. And we're getting ready to seal up now. So a bit of heavy masking going on. So I would imagine we're in the stone guard. So once again, it was more about the factory feel. So stone guard, then some 2K. And then underneath, from the factory, they're basically just sprayed everywhere, right? Eh? Mm. Yeah. But we've always taken the approach that if you mask off all the brackets and the heat shields and stone guard everywhere else, it just adds a little bit of character. Mm. And I, I like the look that we end up with. So that's it now with the, those unmasked. You put a coat of black over it, and I'm sure this would have been done in base coat and then some satin clear. That's what we've been doing. So all the insides done, the underneath done. Now it's time to get serious. Hello, Mr. Hello. Hello. Who's that bloke? Secretary. That's the new boy. <laughs> That's the newbie. So First day on the I job. found that photo when I was going through, Dale. So this is um, September 2014. Mm. And Dale started with us then as um, Logistics manager, that's I think it. the terminology we get. Yeah, that's, that's the title we came up with. So I was finding I was spending too much time on the computer and, and organising everything else besides trying to get cars built. Parts and pickups and... And all that sort of stuff. stuff. So and... that's when all that part stuff really started to, to go for yep. us. And um, the plan was to get, I think it, you were working about 30 hours at the time. Uh, 30, yeah, 35 20, or something. 25, I think. Might. So you had other yeah. things happen, kids to take to yep. school and all sorts of stuff. So yep. yeah, it was a good time and um, Dale was a fitter turner, so he's, he was required to be in the shop and earn some money as well. It was well. a bit of everything, wasn't it? A bit of everything. Except it didn't weld. Yeah. No, that was me. <laughs> so we're getting down that the old gap scenario and once again, there's always debate about what you use to fill where the lead used to be. And what that is, is what I call gorilla hair. So it's it's actually a, a filler with a fiber, fiber um, reinforcement in it. Mm -hmm. And it's a resin based filler. So I normally put epoxy first, put that in, get it to what I think is within a mil or two, re-epoxy and then put my normal body filler over the top. I've been doing it for 30, nearly 40 years and I've never had a comeback. So I continue to do it that way. And then that's that light filler that we are talking about earlier. The galvaplast. And then we worked through that process. That young Darren there on yeah, the block Yeah, he doesn't too. have too many grey hairs yet. Mustn't be the assembly stuff. And then that'd be yeah. there with a coat of epoxy starting to look a bit nicer and straighter. The vacuum going before we had the big vacuum in here. So once again, it's like, you know, it's always going to be filler. We're just trying not to have it everywhere, but um, obviously I put a coat of epoxy back over, re-blocked it, found a few lows, pushed it around. Remembering these have had, you know, full welds yep. in every yeah. direction. Yeah. And then back mask for some primer. So that would have been wet on wet with the epoxy primer, epoxy urethane primer, and then a high build primer. Trace coat, block that all out again, so that's more filler there. And then everything trace coated, and now we're ready to start hitting it with some color. So the original plan with this car, if I remember rightly, Darren, was that we were gonna get it to, 
I think, primer stage or epoxy stage, and it was going to go away with your brother-in-law and get done, and then come back and we'd assemble. Mm. And as we can see, that didn't quite happen. So we ended up a bit in between in the sense that a lot was done here and then it went out to um, to Yes Smash. Yes Smash. Yeah, yeah so um, I don't know if there's much I've probably told all the story now, but... Um, I think it, was, it went there because I knew the guys personally and they offered their booth um, as a favour and yeah. Yeah, so it went there and, and, and Clint was on the gun and then it come back and we blocked it out again, all of us. So he'd had a couple of weeks off work. Yes. And he's a painter, obviously, by trade. Yeah. And um, the three of us hammered it out and Dale was there as well. And I only remembered tonight, Dale, that we, we used the, um, the V-Dub van. Yeah, the one of the, the original van. vans I had was taking panels we were taking over. Taking panels and, yeah. over and back. Yeah. So that's the bay and all the inside done now and then it all got packed up. That was all the gear we were taking over to, um, to do the rubbing and the masking. So on the tilt tray and off to the full booth to um, get some paint done. So these are all over at Yes Smash, over at um, mm -hmm. Port Kimber. And then yes. it returned. And then back uh, without the stripes. So it's very blue, Darren. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Came back for another for that the block before the stripes and then okay to clear because you'd opted to go clear over the black. Yes. So held on the, the old block. I'm pretty sure that Clint was there as well, wasn't he? All of us on it. I can't remember now. Only ten years ago. Mm. Oh, I think he might have thrown his hands in the air. He'd had enough. <laughs> <laughs> So then back over to the booth again, do all those blackouts yep. and the letters and all those sorts of things and then a coat of clearance looking pretty slick there. Mm -hmm. And then the little ancillaries. Mm -hmm. So oh, yeah. I reckon by now, this is about this time of year, it was like the first, second week of November mm -hmm. and we were going to the summer nats. That's always the plan. Yeah. So, the old plastic table out and start pulling the loom apart. Yeah. And yeah. I don't know what happened. I think this is your car, I'm not sure. I found this and I thought, is he doing the job too or was, <laughs> no. or was Dale on one of the cobras? I can't remember. No, no, I was, I'm, I'm sure I was on this one. As on well. this one as well? Yeah. yeah. So those sorts of things, and you're only talking earlier, Dale, about the complexity of trying to do a restored loom mm. yeah, if I, you don't have access to I all the I think I cut up two looms that I had at home to actually make all, get all the right To get fittings. all the right plugs and all mm. to do it. Mm. And I, I, I know now, you know, there's a couple of guys, there's a, a guy, Pylec, P-Y-L-E-C, I think it is, that does, you know, Falcon Looms now, professionally. And I don't know whether they're re reproducing some of the stuff because they actually, you know, you look at the looms, they look brand new. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's getting harder and harder to be trying to use original stuff. Mm. And then the next photo we can see there now is all that zinc. So that whole process that that I've always adopted, that we would have done on this car as well, is that would have all been sent off while we're doing body work and stuff. But now it's like, right, now let's get organised so that we can find, put this find all the bits. Put this car back together, and of course the games room then gets converted into storage. Yep. And I reckon by the invoice on the bottom there, this was we sat down with the computer one night with um, GT Ford Performance. Yeah. No, GT the, Ford. The GT shop. The GT yeah. shop, but yeah. it's GT something. Mm. And by the time we finished, it was about 10 grand, wasn't it? I think that was the first one. I think we had another, <laughs> that was the first I think we had another five <laughs> to finish off. Yep. Yeah. So it was like, yeah, we need that nut. Yeah, we need this washer. Oh yeah, we need that panel, like that bit and that light and that pedal. And, and next thing you know, you get the end, it's 10 grand. Mm. So if you wonder why you know, it costs so much to do these cars, it gives you a bit of an insight mm. into what goes on. Now, there's a few, there's a run of photos on the diff here and I'll let you talk through it and because and, you had your mate helping you and, and the process. So just as the, fa the photos go through, just let me know what we're doing and why we're doing it. Yeah, mate Adam decided to strengthen the diff. We put a uh, thick wall tube in and it was three inch all the way through where from factory it stepped down to I think two and a half 
in the ends. Um, but because it had a high horsepower engine, we thought we'd strengthen the dip up a bit. So part of the issue then? Created a lot of issues. <laughs> Nothing fits. Yes. So. Um, yeah, larger U-bolts. So we had to weld up all the holes and re-drill them further apart. Because once again, you wanted that factory feel, mm. but... Yeah, so looking at it, it looked all factory, same with those brackets. They had to be spread apart just that little bit, trimmed for everything to fit for the three inch fit. tube. Yeah. And then of course, as we can see now, you've gone with the RRS brakes front and rear. Yeah. So everything's bigger and then we're still trying to run original handbrake cables. And I know that you'd spent a lot of time going through a process to get yeah. all of this stuff to fit. And then of course, once we're done, we need to paint it all paint black. It all. Yeah. So you can see there with the leaf springs, for instance, we actually pull those apart, paint them, put all the new um, slippers in, so the, the nylon pads that go between them and then bend all the, the tabs back over. And in the meantime, Howard's doing a bit of a colour sand in the engine bay. Can't leave it like that. No. Gonna make that a bit shinier. And then get the big wand out and give it a polish. Still doing that. I was out here at bloody nine o'clock the other night trying to get the quarters done on this sedan. Tell us about what we're looking at now, Darren. Uh, it's pretty much basically RRS struts and power rack and pinion. So what was your thinking there? I don't know, just spend a lot of money by the look of it, but um, <laughs> I wanted to handle a little bit better and um, I wanted to retain power steering because it was a power steering car and yep. I didn't like the original power steering, how it felt. It was very light. Um, so, so you're going to have a lot of power and you, and you like to drive mm. your cars, so yeah. it was always going to be an issue. Now I see the next, the second photo in that lot is the two um, stub axles there. I remember having this discussion with you that they looked a bit agricultural. It might have worked all right. They did. But mm. um, a little bit of the old bling grind happening again. Yeah, same as the door handles. Which I'd done on the, yeah. yeah, which I'd done on, on my Mustang when I put RRS in that. Mm. And then the one in the background has been painted with that cast iron paint. With, so it looks like it's an original cast iron stub axle, but um, a little bit nicer than what the RRS were straight out of the box. Made a hell of a difference. I did. To the, out, you know, mm. to the end result. The little things. Yep, they all up. More wand. Ooh, look Bling. at that, eh? Shiny. Look at that Ford logo, Dale, you like oh, that? Please. F-O-R-D, you gotta love it. numbered. This is the part I really love. You know, when it's all coming together and every, every bit that goes on looks new, you know, you've worked away, you've got all the things together. Oh, who's that? <laughs> so Darren's hard at work on the inside. Yeah. It's a smurf. <laughs> <laughs> And then all these little bits and pieces that just take time to either find the part if you, you know if your shifter's gone. Now, I see there's a key in that one. Then tell us about that, Darren. It's yeah, unusual. I think it was an option on the day that you could get the lock in the T bar. Um, and I it was think a Ford option, was it? Yes, and yeah, then right. they reproduced them. And I thought, oh, yeah, that'd be cool. It's just one extra little thing to stop someone from stealing the car. Yeah, and pretty rare. I would have. Mm. I'd, I haven't. I don't know if I've seen another one, to be honest, without realising it had it even. But mm. um, yeah, pretty cool. And then on on the left there, the little lights. You just fitted a set of those today, didn't you? I did. So the sedan, we're yeah. running those in 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 the boss. And um, so they're the rear quarter. The rear quarter interior lights. Interior right? lights. Yep. Okay. Yep. yep. So there's a couple of different versions made now, like repo ones, and. Um, yeah, it all adds to it. And then obviously a rebuilt steering column, which is a standard national design thing. But with the RRS, on the bottom you can see the column there, it has the, the heap joint to go down to the rack. So it modifies that inner shaft. And then there's a, a roller bearing goes in the bottom to hold that shaft because from the factory, it's the steering box that holds it. Mm. So this way it has a little bearing in there that holds it all together. Now tell us what's happening here, Dar um, Darren, because I know that's not we've got no, our arrest, not hooked so. up to anything. Uh, it's just there for sheer looks, for originality, um, because the strut pretty much finished underneath the tower. 
So, yeah, so it's a look I like, and we did that on Cool Mint. Mm. But I think you added a little bit more to it because you actually cut the top off an old shocky, didn't you? I did. So that yeah. it looked like it actually had a shocky in there as well, yeah. which I thought was very clever. Looked really good. So there's the big, um, the fronts. So how good's your memory? You remember how big they were? 350 millimetres. 350 mil, yeah. two piece, yeah. with the RRS block. No wonder you had to put big wheels under it. Yeah, <laughs> people didn't understand. They said, why'd you put such big wheels? Well, nothing smaller would fit and I didn't want Simmons, so mm. that was only the wheel sort of that looked period correct. Yeah, and we haven't got to them yet, so we'll yeah. get to them in a minute. So there's that diff going in now. They're looking pretty stock, even though it's huge. Mm. And a strain center, I remember it correctly. Yes. With some billet yeah. axles. Yeah. Because what did that motor end up making? It was estimated between doing? 650 to 700. 700. So, yeah, yeah, around that mark. So, a bit of a, um, you and I did the hood lining on that one, where they thought, it can't be that hard. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that right, Dave? Yeah, your favourite saying. Can't yeah. be that yeah. hard. Yep. So, we, we put that in, and then there's that wiring loom. So, the reason that that's not all taped is if you do a loom like that, if you lay it in the way it's laid in there and tape it on the job, it will actually hold its shape. So where it goes mm. up over the booster, if you tape it all on the bench and then try and put it in, It'll it doesn't want to move. Mm. Yeah. Where yeah. if you lay it in like that, just with the loop here and there, you can actually tape it on the job, then it will actually hold itself in position. Because the guy pretty much undid all the original tape so you could get it to a point where you could work with it, mm. to do put it. all the joints and do that, yeah. yeah. So now tell me, Darren, that back indicator there on the quarter, is that, that's got the chrome ring around it, is it? Or is that just a reflection? It has, no, I think I did put the chrome ring around it. So, uh, when, who had the chrome ring? Was it? There was several different the versions. Wash? There was the chrome that was built into it, and then there was the Fairlanes or LTDs that had- it Had it separate? Yes, a chrome sort Cause of- Because I like those as well, and I reckon I've already bought a set for the panel van for the back, yeah. but I could never quite remember what come out with them standard. Mm. I don't know whether it was just late XBs. Maybe. Yeah. yeah, it's funny all those little changes and mm. things that, yeah. and that's looking pretty slick there. Now I think we used Repo Honeycomb on yours, wasn't it? No, that was Cool Mint. No, it, it was Repo. Um, they were, somebody was just making a new set that actually did fit and it had all the original style pins on it and I. it was only just released. So. At that yeah. stage, yeah. yeah. And obviously, you know, we would have re Remanufactured the tailight housing. Mm. Starting to get a bit of trim, so we'll talk about that in a minute when we get to it. So there's that indicator now you can see with the chrome around that I'm talking about. Yeah. And then the B had the chrome with the black inserts in the in the light. Yeah. And what else can we talk about there? That pretty much covers it. Where that boot lid, where the, the hockey stick goes up and then the boot lid goes with it. Every coupe I've ever done, I've had to trim about four or five mil off the bottom of the boot lid to get it to line up like that. Because mm. they're all hang down on the Too end. Too long. It just yeah, does yeah, my head yeah. in. So we're getting to that assembly stage. So you had two engines for this car. Yeah, I built the original engine um, and sat in the corner and I wanted a big engine. And um, yeah, so I've done both. So you Much both? to the wife's <laughs> Disagreement. <laughs> so, so this is the big engine. So this was what a four, four twenty, four twenty inch, yeah. um, and um, the builder, Shane Trace Shane Engines, engines yeah. um, who's done a few for you over the years. So there's you have a little tinker getting ready to go in by the look of it. And I love this injection. Mm -hmm. Now. I'm going to get you to explain when you, how you, you went about this whole process, but pretty much it's an old style Hillborn. Yes. And then it was converted, but I've got a couple of photos here I know of it, here and there. So that's it sitting in the car. So tell me the process that you went through to take that Hillborn to convert it then to being electronic. Uh, I had to get some bosses welded in to take the injectors. Um, it was all rough cast aluminium and I had to polish it after all the welding was done on it. And um, 
Yeah. It was so just, you made a centre plate for it, didn't you, as well? Or was that just something you had to modify by memory? I think I made it. I think the injection... I don't know if it come off a Cleveland to start with or something like the plate was too small or something like that so I had to widen it just a little bit. probably a Windsor bit. one. Mm. So there was a lot of fabrication, a lot of work and then once you got into that process, because um, I was partly involved in it because we're, when you were driving it, we are driving around the road and everything decided that we were going to sit on about three and a half grand mm -hmm. for a while. Yeah. <laughs> because being basically a race set up, once it got hot, all the shafts wanted to tighten up yeah. and, and you ended up sending the manifold back to Hillborn in, in America. the US yeah. and they put they cut all the shafts and put adjustments in them so that when it gets hot it can actually move mm. and not lock up yeah. so it wasn't like just this oh, I'll buy this thing and put it on it turned into quite a, a big chore to get it all to it work was, yeah. and you did get it to work yes um, after much um, Perseverance, and You're a then patient man, Darren. you ended up putting bleed screws in, yeah. like bleed lines in as well, didn't you? To yes, to tie all the to even them out. Yeah, even so them out. Just yeah. it went on and on and on, but mm. you, you persevered and, and yeah. got there. And I, there, there'll be some more photos because I know there are some more in here somewhere. Um, so a C4, yep, and so it was um, manualised. Yes, full yep. manualised. What sort of converted size conversion not running? I think it was only a two and a half. Yeah, that would I think worked. that's what I stated. Yep. The, yeah. There he is. Working away. So, brown. so this is this is getting down to the crunch now because we're heading towards summer nuts and I know that um, we're running out of time real quick. And I reckon looking at the the welder on the exhaust there, we're probably in the exhaust stage. Um, so the big aircon radiator. Yeah. And then obviously a cooler for the trans. The trans. There's that window you boys managed to get in on yep. your own. Mm. Wonderful job. Not a scratch on it, was it, Dale? No. Look at that, all sitting down it's nice. Still, you'll still never believe that we did it first. No. I, I didn't. <laughs> look how good that boot lid fit. Yeah. Right, look at that. So once again, something that you and I do on all these cars is to match those mouldings to the body opening mm. so that when it goes together, they sit nice. Now that's that photo I was thinking about. So that's it at chains yeah looking super nice love that photo so the power you run the factory pump with the rs the power steer uh, that was actually supplied um, oh that yeah what brand was that a march wasn't it yes march. yeah so the the drive set up was a march yeah because that looks like a ford pump doesn't it mm. yeah like the old single wow we'll jump back to the, oh, the rear window again quick we're, we're Look so how impressed good that by how out. good that mm. fit is, right? So we Beautiful. threw more photos in. So now, Darren the trimmer. <laughs> so that gives us a hint. So we've got white trim. Yes. Um, and, well, these are all over the place. Maybe I need to do a bit more homework, but I've been a bit busy. So we entrusted Potsy to come and do the exhaust. And if I remember correctly, this is near Christmas to New Year. It was very late. It was very late mm -hmm. in the piece. They, another one of his nice systems, um, the Filippo mufflers by memory and, and three inch stainless. And then the fit up on the inside, a lot of those parts from the GT shop and some nice new door trims. And then all of those ancillaries that we normally get done well and truly before the event. And you had a, all good original glass, didn't you? No, I had, I brought some glass a long time ago, uh, before all the repo stuff, so I honestly don't know where they got it from, but it was all green tint glass, um, and it fitted perfect, so, yeah. So all that assembly, now, here's the first real good photo of that trim. Tell us a bit about what was happening with that. Uh, I always liked the cars or option, usually through Peter Warren Ford or McLeod Ford with the dealer inserts. Um, and this striped insert was very similar to um, a factory one that they'd done, usually in grey. Um, so I wanted blue, and I wanted white trim to set the blue off. And you searched what, high and wide for that, I did, didn't for probably six to 12 months. And I eventually found it in the UK. Um, so there was a couple of pieces and plenty to do the interior trim, so I brought the lot. Yep. And um, yeah, 
Very cool. So um, just one of the fuel lines there running. You get a good look at the way that floor's come up with the, the stone guard. Yeah. The fuel line running along there and then back to Potsy doing the exhaust. So we've got the standard fuel tank which you've mounted all the electric pumps and all in for the injection from the top. And at that time the fuel tank hadn't been done. So yeah, it see. still needed to be painted. So <laughs> few um, dents. We had to make get that, that exhaust fit around it because it was that big, not a lot of room. Get that no. big three inch to, to snake its way around. And in typical Darren Blackman fashion, we're going to have the original colour shocks. Shocks, yeah. And then there's that tank now getting a bit of love. Actually, I could tell a good story about that. So the yellow tape there you can see behind the filler neck, that's where the pumps are mounted. So there was a, 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 a plaque that went on there with the pumps that were submerged. Yeah, like a built-in surge tank as well. But I was away that week mm. on a family thing and Darren, I was talking to Darren on the phone and I told him where the silver was and he painted it. And then I, he said, oh, it's come out really good. It's got that nice matte look about it. And I said, mate, that's base coat. You've got to put some clear <laughs> on it yet. You've got to get the gun back out and give it another go. So, good shot here from the top. You can see with the crash pad off with all of that, all of the, um, instruments and all done real nice and that injection and the, the little shot there that's just popped up was obviously at home on the kitchen table by a lot of it proud yes. as punch after doing the big polish job i'd say yeah and that's it sitting there so we're getting down to the the 11th hour and we i imagine i i remember having this massive debate amongst all of us about mm. does the blue work or not and after much debate it was decided we'd try and find someone to give them a coat of paint or powder mm. coat but I know it was very close to Christmas Eve mm. even not after mm. Christmas and it ended up I think that I ended up doing them in the booth. Yeah, I, think it was, I think it was yeah. the week between Christmas and New Year. New Year. So one of the issues we that you had was getting the thing to run initially because yeah. it had been a long time and, and Shane's an engine builder not a tuner yeah. as in, in the sense of electronics. So we, we give Rude up at Newcastle, our mate Rude to come down um, and hop on the laptop, see if we get it to run, which he managed to do with a bit of hair pulling. Mm. And um, he's obviously a mechanic by trade, but now runs his own business up there, which is Newcastle... Ceramic coatings, is it? Well, he does ceramic coating, yeah, paint work. Yeah. He does powder coating. Newcastle um, protective coating. Though. That's it. That's yeah. fine. Well done, Dale. So I'm he's um, wrong doing that as his own business, yeah? And yeah. Having doing a, a good having job. A ball. Yeah, doing a good job of that. He did a good job on this because it so was... So we had no hurt. Yeah. So no. Rude, it's up to you. Rude, get it going. <laughs> so then all of that magical stuff of trying to make coupe tail lights work and, and all those sorts of things. So who we got here, Baron? That's the owner of Nippy Signs at Caring Bar. Um, he was... Yeah, one of the guys that does all the striping in the GT club, so we got him down to do some so, stripes on this. Some stripes, but that are... Not just any stripes. Yes, McLeod, McLeod horn Ford car. Ford horn car. It's a 70s porn, Dale. Yep. So it was one of those things where it was a little bit, oh, I'm not sure, will I, won't <laughs> I, will I, won't I, and in the end it was, yeah, let's do it. So, yeah, yeah the stripes on, and then that's the first glance of them big wheels. So they were a 19? 18. And 18. Yeah. 18, 8s and 10s, I think. I remember. Nines. The rears were nines. That was as big as I could get them. So. They were from the UK as well, weren't yes, they, Yes, they were so from the just... UK. And then obviously now we're getting closer and closer to getting a bit of completion. And of course now we're at some of that. We got there. We did. We're a bit raw <laughs> in many ways, but yes. the car itself was complete. But I mean, it was a long way from being where it ended up. You know, a few months after that, but it, it, you've got to have a deadline to get somewhere. Yeah. And it presented really, really well. And obviously, mate, it's in the hall there, made the top 60. Yeah, yes. we, just, we just got it in the hall. <laughs> we yes. had, a of, yeah. had a bit of fun starting Another set of plugs. It. <laughs> Another set of plugs. Yes. So it was running, but it was running a bit rich. Yeah. And that's out the front of Building B, just out the front of hanging out where we hang out. So looking pretty cool. There's some good shots there of some of that. And then what I like to do is to get a professional to photograph the car so we've got a good memory of it. And that's um, Saul when he was working up at um, Express Publications with all his gear out there. And, and these are some of the shots that he took 
Look at him. Proud as punch, Howard. Yeah, look at yeah, him. Look at that. A eh? lot of hard work. Yeah. Finally done. Finally done. And that's me going, check my car out. <laughs> <laughs> so the shed was um, pretty new then, or I had just a fresh coat of paint. Fresh coat of paint. Yeah, yeah, looks yeah. pretty good there. Yeah. So there's all that undercarriage. So they're all looking very sharp. And that's a good shot there of the trim. So full GT spec with the horn car stripes. Yeah to match the horn car stripes on the outside. And pretty much a, a stock engine bay with a modified engine. Yes. With all the stickers and all the bits and pieces. Very sharp looking. Not bad for a Ford, Darren. Not bad, Darren. No. Goes yeah. all right. Goes all right. <laughs> and then them big brakes. Yeah. And the rears as well. Now where's this, Darren? Uh, it's at the 2015 GT Nationals. Where was that? Was that? Sandown. In Melbourne? Yep. So how'd you go there? Uh, it got best modified XB GT coupe. Very nice. Hmm. So that was its really first major outing complete. Yes. With all the little bits and pieces done. Yeah. And then we managed to um, convince you to take it up to Motorex. Motorex, yeah. And set it up on um, the Mustang stand up there and actually took a couple of wheels off and had a TV display going, which is the, most of the photos we're using now were from that display. And that's it there with no lights on, I think. And then there's one here with it, all the bling. Looking pretty sharp. It's definitely worthy. Hey? Definitely worthy to be there. For sure. Yeah. yeah, no, it was a it was a standout car. And of course from there, Street Machine magazine did a feature. Yeah. And um, you and I went for a bit of a drive to do some shots with them. Glenn Torrens there and myself hanging about. So that was we went all the way to Helensburg, didn't we? Yes. So yeah, we, I think we'd done a couple of runs to Helensburg. From your place out and up mm -hmm. up, you know, we probably did. I don't know. 50, 80, 100 k's mm, for the shoot. Yeah. Got some nice photos. But he did some of the brake wall there at uh, and then Port Kembla, down the coal loader. Down yeah. to Port mm. Kembla, the coal loader, to do some shots down there. You reckon you can get it out there? Oh, are you? It's high enough. Get it out there. <laughs> In between rain showers, I remember. It was filthy when we come back. Oh, yes. Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah. Black. I didn't realise yeah. when they said, oh, I'll go down there. And I'm yeah. going, oh, yeah. So there we are, just hanging out. Yeah. So that was just up near Boomerang Golf Course? Yes, it's the old Illawarra Highway. Where are we at now? Uh, that was when I took it to All Ford Day and I took me FG GTP there as well. Yeah, nice. Hmm. One of your other blue cars, Darren. It is. One of one, that car, Dale. <laughs> one of one. And then a Street Fords, got a feature in there. Yes. And I don't have all of that. And as it is, we're running miles over, but that's life. Um, and then this next photo, so you went down um, the track of getting full rego as a on club rego on club rego with an engineer's report. Yes. So obviously the air cleaner was an issue. Yes, the, they didn't like the open trumpets, so I had to make it a closed system. So I had to basically use a sprint car um, type air cleaner and make up my own frame and. Um, yeah. And that was like PCV and all, yes. like, yeah, all those sorts of things. Pollution, was there much yeah. else that you had to do to the car besides the ADR, like the 27A? Or was no, it no, I think it was just it? pretty much the air cleaner. Yeah. So, and then all of a sudden, yeah, that that's that was the stocker. yeah, that was before it got pushed into the corner, right? The engine, and um, yeah, that basically how it sat for many years. Until until we pulled it back out and pulled the big motor out and so you decided to go back to the matching number. Yep. And um, at this point in time, probably not a bad time to, to talk about. Oh, there it is, driving off. So obviously, people watch these videos. That's out in front of my place. So I'm sure we'll have a bit of sound with the nice V8 running down there when we when we have that up. So that matching engine was all part of getting it ready to move it on yes unfortunately unfortunately so i mean just explain a bit what was happening there in, in uh, obviously a lot of work and i mean a lot of years had passed since we did it but yeah um 
come to know what I know now, it's probably too good of a car to enjoy fully on the street. Um, some of the other cars were really good drivers and I think I enjoy them a lot more. Yeah. Um, so this was yeah. an enjoyable driver, but you it just knew that every time you drove it, yes. it meant work to maintain it at the level. Yes, that's right. And I, I had a couple of close calls with it, with um, some people nearly backing into it in car parks. And it was only lucky that I put myself between my car and their car and shouted at them and they had no idea. Yeah. So yeah, it's just nightmare. Yeah, so it's very difficult to sort mm. of accept the fact that you've got a car that's got, you know, a very high value and a lot yeah. of your own time and money invested in it. Mm. That was a bit like when I had the Mustang, you just can't park it in the street. Mm. That's you right. just don't yeah. feel comfortable with it. Yeah. So it went to Australian muscle car. Yes. And what was, happened then? Uh, I think it was on the market for two months, three months. And um, yes, a gentleman in Western Australia purchased the vehicle. So at the moment, it's maybe on its way over there at the moment. So it's, it's only happened in the last week or two? It has, and it's all been paid for. So unfortunately, I do not own the vehicle. Anymore. So you don't own the vehicle? No. But I mean, a really, a really great experience, that car. Yeah. Um, and I mean, we, we learn a lot, lot together on it, but like you said earlier, you sacrificed probably three other cars four. to get to, four, four to, cars, get to that yeah. point. Um, but in saying all of that, with what you've been able to recoup, hmm. you probably yeah. lost a few hours, but not a lot of money in the process. Yeah, that's right. Um, and it's gone now to a home. The guy actually that was purchasing it contacted me and said that he was buying it and he was going to look after it and it was you know something he's always wanted. So someone else, you know, it will live on for someone else to enjoy. Yeah, that's right. Um, and it really is a beautiful car. So another one that's um, been built, enjoyed, moved on. Another survivor. Uh, resurrected, mm. yes. So yeah. now you've got an XP convertible at home? Uh, a US 63 convertible. Convertible. So like yeah, pretty much like an. And XL. obviously your GDP. Yes. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Howard. Yeah. We we Darren. dragged on a bit, but I think yeah. um, we didn't sort of no, lag about. There's a lot no, in just there. Just a lot to do. Yeah. yeah. And um, we thank everybody for joining us again, and I hope you've enjoyed that coupe. And we've got a few more coupes to go, and we've got a couple other little sidelines. We've got yep. a four door and a, a very unusual custom car to cover yet, but. Um, if you get the opportunity, hit that subscribe mm -hmm. button. That always helps with the process. If you've got any questions, like. yep. I'll bug yep. Darren if I can't answer them and we'll, we'll get those um, answers back to you as soon as we can. Hit the like button. Mm. Thanks to Lovell's Automotive Systems. Grab a shirt. Mm. Support our sponsor. Um, great company, great Australian company. We talk about it all the time, but they are really good. David Ford's Dale. Oh, one day. Next, one day. next, next time, Dale. <laughs> next time. So thank you very much. Thank you, Darren and Darren. Thank you. And body bye for now. See ya. See ya. I'm, I'm lost front. weight. And I've never had any shoulders just, just to start with. Just pin your shirt to mine. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's a bit further look now. Hey, Dale. Howard. <laughs> I don't know.